Shalom, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. How everybody doing today? All praises to the Father and His Son. Man, we in the building, man. We were already we in the building for another Monday night medicine. Right. Hey, man, we in the building, Israel. Listen, man, make sure y'all taking good notes, all right? Taking good notes, this is going to be a fire class. Uh, as you can see, the title of today's class is Falling from Grace. Falling from Grace. Of course, I think I had the title changed. Uh, I think before it was... Uh, do grace give you the permission to sin? That's right. So pretty much in those guidelines, as you can see, we're going to be going over grace. Who is grace for? What is grace about? Is grace a permission to go out and do all types of wickedness to do what you want because you are, you know, because you have grace? What is grace for? Who is grace to? These things that we're going to find out in today's class, all right? We hear this a lot when we go out to the streets and we go teaching, all right? So we most definitely want to get an understanding. So we in this building once again, our praises. Let's give a round of applause, this girl. Give the, hey, give the most high round of applause. Our praises. Like I said, what is grace? What is it all about? I'm going to give I'm going to tell y'all some the reason that I was thinking about this class. I was thinking about my I was thinking about myself. I remember when I was in the world and I was in all types of wickedness. And of course, when you go to the Christian church, some scriptures stick. And what always stick to me was the brother on the cross, the two thieves on the cross, on, on the cross with Christ. And I used to think amongst myself. If anything was to happen to me, that I will be able to say, God, forgive me, and I will be in the kingdom of heaven. I will be doing all types of wickedness, and then all of a sudden, at a drop of a dime, Lord, forgive me. Kind of like you get ready to hit a tree, and right before you hit this tree, Lord, forgive me, and all of a sudden, you're in the kingdom of God. Because I thought of the story of the brother on the cross. Matter of fact, we're going to dive in there before we get into grace, all right? So let's get that. Let's get that in uh, Luke. This Luke 23, is, verse 39. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 39. Let me get over there with you. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 39. Uh -huh. And one of the male factors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Mm -hmm. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? See, thou art in the same condemnation. All right, so you have a thief on the left and a thief on the right. I was looking it up for the names of the brother. Of course, Esau gave two names for the brothers, but there's no name given in the scriptures, all right? So we're just going to say the thief on the left and the thief on the right, all right? So one thief is going at Christ. If you be the Savior, once you get yourself down and get us down also, but this one thief on verse 40. Let's read that again. Verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Read. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have not have done nothing amiss. So this, how would this man... When you look at this scripture, how would this man know that Jesus Christ was a righteous man, that he did nothing wrong unless he was walking with Christ? See, in the Christian church, we never think like that. Right. We just say, oh, man, this man was a sinner and then he got salvation and all of a sudden he in the kingdom of God. That's right. Not thinking, how would this man know that Christ was a righteous man, that Christ didn't do no wrong? Unless he was walking with Christ. And he fell on the way. He made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right? But keep going out. Verse 42. Uh -huh. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And... 
in the in my of course in the wickedness I used to always think about this scripture I can do all the mist the wickedness that I want to do and I can just think right at the drop of a dime before grace has inspired that I can say Lord forgive me for my sins and I'm going to be in the kingdom of heaven a lot of Christians think like this you can do all the wickedness that you want to do then right at the drop of a dime the kingdom is going to be open to you. Yeah. Not really going into the scriptures and understanding how did this man know that Christ didn't do nothing wrong? Right. That Christ was a just man unless he was walking with Christ. Right? So I just thought, because this is the reason for the class. I just thought about this, and I said, man, a lot of Christians think like this. I was one of them. I was one of them at one point in time when we was in the Christian church. But let's see. Let's get Romans in 15 and 4. Let's dive in this thing, man. Let's see who grace is for. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Let me get over there with you. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. All right. So the scripture says, for whatsoever thing was written aforetime was written, written for our learning. So if we want to learn about grace, we must go what? Into the Bible. That's right. I ain't got to lean to my own understanding on what grace is. Like we see a lot of Christian pastors, you know, they don't go into the Bible. But clearly the Bible says if you want to understand grace, you have to go into the Bible and get an understanding what grace is. Mm -hmm. The Bible says what everything was written before time was written for our learning. So continue on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, may have hope. I know a lot of us, you have had a lot of pacify. What I mean by pacify, we have things, you had a hard day at work, you'll go get a 40 ounce. Some of, <laughs> or you'll smoke a blunt, or you'll go smoke a cigarette. We have things to pacify us being in this society. Times to be hard, man, I need a cigarette. I need a new port. But God says now that we become new creatures, we look forward to the scriptures as comfort. Message. Scriptures as comfort. Not picking up a blunt. Not going out here being a whore. I need to get a feel good. I need to get my rocks off. Not sleeping from woman to woman, from man to man. Believe it or not, people do that for feel good. Thanks. They going through stuff, man, I got it. I just got to go. I got to get it off my chest, mm -hmm. right? But watch this. I Go over to 2 Peter's 1 and 20. Watch this. If the Bible says whatever was written aforetime was written for our learning, and we understand that this is the word of God, why not go unto the word of God and see what God is saying, how we're supposed to maneuver in this society, in, this, in, in Babylon the Great? How are we supposed to move? How are we supposed to conduct ourselves? But watch this. Read first 2 Peter 1 and 20. This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. Uh -huh. 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. We are not going to be pulling this out our behinds about what grace is. Because it may make us feel good. Mm -hmm. We're going to actually be going into the Bible and showing you what God says grace is how grace is supposed to be used. We going, that's what we're going to do. It's coming from the Father and not coming from us. That's, right. that's no private interpretation. You ain't going to be able to say, you brothers made that up. Mm. No, brother, we went from precept upon precept, line upon line. We went into the Bible. We went into God's words to show you what grace is. That's no private interpretation. But continue on. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God. By holy men of God. You got to ask yourself, how did they, how did Moses know if God wasn't behind it showing him that we was going to go into cargo slave ship 3,000 years later? The prophecy. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did Christ know? How did Paul know? The prophecy these brothers spoke. God has to be in control and showing these brothers. It says that the holy men of God spake and moved by the Holy Ghost. 
So we want to understand though. I mean, we want to understand what grace is. Let's go into the word of God. There's no, there's no going to be no private interpretation. You're not going to be able to say you brothers made some up. We're going to go into the Bible and show you exactly what grace is. So now as we dive into it, mm -hmm. what is grace? What is grace? Uh, can you do me a favor? I know I, I'm, I'm putting you brothers on the spot. Pull up the definition of grace, period. Grace, period. What is grace? Pull that up for me. So is grace, why is grace given? Who is grace given for? Is grace, a? are you saved by grace? These are questions that people really want to know. The Christian church say, hey, man, you ain't got to keep no laws of God. You will save under grace. <laughs> All right, we'll see. But remember, I'm looking for grace, period. Grace, period. That's what it says? Let's see, let's see. What is grace, period? Uh, there you go. That's it right there. Let's read that also. Yes, sir. This is the definition of grace, period. It says, what is grace days, period? What is grace period? A grace period is a period of time after the due date of a payment or other obligations during which the borrower is not charged a late fee or penalty. This period typically begins the day after the due date and ends on the final day of the grace period. So when that final grace is over with a water bill, can y'all do me a favor? I'm gonna put y'all back on the spot again. Give me a bill that says past due. So a grace period, right, is supposed to, you're supposed to gather, let's say you got a mortgage, and your mortgage is due on the first, right? It's due on the first, and they'll give you to the 15th to pay. That's right. Your job, if you didn't pay that on the first, mm -hmm. is to accumulate the money to pay the bank back. That's right. Before the 15th, let's say, say the water bill. Mm -hmm. You have until the 15th past due. I know some of this give y'all nightmares. I know some of you ready to run. You see this past due. I have seen this and ready to run. Lord have mercy. Help me. But past due. You past due, my brother. We're going to give you up to the 15th to pay this bill. But in that time of the 15th, you have to do what? Accumulate the funds to make it right. Let me make this right with the Bank of America. Let me make this uh, uh, right with whatever electric company that you may have. That's what grace is. But we're going to see what the Bible says. Do the Bible correlate with what I'm saying or what? So you can drop that. So let's go into the scriptures. Let's go over into Titus 2 yeah. and 11. Let's see what grace is all about. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh -huh. For the grace of God that bring of salvation hath appeared to all men. Uh-oh. It says, for the grace of God that bring of salvation hath appeared to all men. Hmm. We're going to come back to it, but I'm going to let you finish it. All right. Go to yes. verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lust. So grace should be teaching. All right. Go ahead. Teaching us that denying ungodly and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. All right. So let's go and break this down. Let's go back to verse 11 and let's read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 11. For the grace of God that bring of salvation hath appeared to all men. Uh-oh. We fall off the horse when we see this. Okay. Salvation has to appear to all men. Hmm. Who do the Chinese man need to be saved from? Hmm. Who do the white man need to be saved from? Right. Who do Moab need to be saved from? Fact. These dudes have, thank you, nobody. These dudes, the only people that I see that need to be saving is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Don't you know if they wanted to put us into slavery again, we have no military might to fight. 
we seen this firsthand when the uh, the weather was bad down this way. You know, we're not used to that snow down in the south. Right. That snow came, was it, about three years ago? Yep. Negroes was begging for toilet paper, trying to get toilet paper. The toilet paper was out of the stores. Right. You couldn't find it. But the only people that I need, to, that I see that need saving are the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We see that down in, uh, uh, what, in Texas at the border. But, all right, give me Acts. Give me Acts 531. Let's see who's salvation. What is it talking about? Salvation. This is the book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 31. Uh -huh. Start at verse 29. Verse 29. Uh -huh. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. To be a prince and a savior unto Israel. Because like I stated before, we are the people that need saving. We don't have no military might. That's right. The only our only might is the father and his son and his angels. And that's enough. That's, right. <laughs> that's enough. We've seen what happened to Egypt. Mm. That's why we always teaching. Hey, keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ because that's our weapon. That's right. When it's time to go to war, we in we in, in line with the father in the order that he wants us in, he's gonna come fight for us. But let's continue on. Go over to um Acts 2. Yes, sir. Let's see. Who is salvation for? That's what we, it says salvation has appeared to all men. Let's see. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Brother, you said whosoever. That's mm -hmm. everybody. That's all nations. That see. whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. See, I ain't plugging all nations in. Remember, the scripture says you're not to add on or take away. That's right. So the scriptures explains itself. Right? That's so right. we read two scriptures that says salvation is for Israel. But I believe you need a little more. Go over to Luke 1 and 68. What are you being saved from? Are we saved now? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we'll go ahead, Doc. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Of all nations. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Oh, okay, go ahead. For he have visited and redeemed his people. Uh, his people. Uh -huh. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Hold oh. Because we got to make sure that people understand who is God's people. Yes, Give me sir. that in Matthew 2 and 6. And we're going to come back to this. Who is God's people? Is it all nations? Let's see. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor. That shall rule my people, Israel. My people, Israel. So go back over to Luke. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people mm. and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, Three. that we should be saved from our enemies. That we, the Israelites, shall be saved from our enemies. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from all the hands of they that hate us. Believe it or not, I don't care how Esau treats you at your job. They really hate your guts. They talk bad about you when they get home. I can it to you. Yeah, yeah, you got damn right. That's what they do. That's right. So you need to understand if they, matter of fact, if they doing right by you, our praises to the Most High. The, the Most High right. will make your enemies your footstool. He will move their hearts to do right by you. 
but these people are wicked. <laughs> it is what it is. But God said, all the hands that hate us. So you telling me you know more than the Lord? Facts. The Lord created these people. He said, they hate your guts. Yo, go ahead, read that. Huh? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 7. Uh -huh, read. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. Right. And that's what, if your ways, if you want that Edomite or that Moabite to be nice with you, do right by the Lord. Remember, do right by the Lord and Lord will make them, you know what? This brother good. We've seen what they did uh, with our forefather Joseph in Egypt. That's how we need to understand. That's what we need to know. It ain't it ain't just because they kind and nice. It's because the most high God would, would move their spirit to be kind to you. That's right. So let's go back over to Titus. So now we understand that salvation appeared to all men, and all the men that it appeared to is the Israelites. That's right. Right? So let's go back to Titus. Let's finish it. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2, and verse 11. Uh -huh. For the grace of God that bring of salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness. Uh oh so within that time span, it should be teaching you ungodliness, not, not to do ungodliness. Right. But keep going. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Denying, right. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. We should live soberly. Uh-huh. Righteously. Righteously. And godly in this present world. So within that time span, you should be learning how to be righteous. What is righteous according to the Bible? Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Let's get it. What is righteous? Because during this time span, you should be learning this. Remember, what we the definition meaning that we brought up. Remember, during that time span, you should be getting what? The wages. Right. Let me accumulate my money before I can pay this bill. Guess what? Now, with the scriptures, you should be learning how to govern your spirit. That's right. How to refrain from certain sins, right. from all sins. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. I'll read. And it shall be all righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he have commanded us. And it shall be our righteousness, our righteousness, Israel righteousness, if we do the commandments of God. Yeah. So, so the opposite of righteousness, righteousness is what? Is unrighteous. That's right. It's unrighteous. Let's see what unrighteous is. Get First John 5 and 17. What is unrighteous? Because the opposite of righteous is unrighteous. So what is unrighteous? This is the book of First John, chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is what? All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. We call a sin is sin. You don't sin. skip it. We want to make sure we keep we being righteous. During that time span, we should be keeping the laws of God, learning how to. That's learning, right. sisters, learning how to be quiet, mm -hmm. not call your husband the band. Mm -hmm. That's right. Brothers, learning how to control your eyes. Keep your eyes in check. Not to be lustful. Not to commit adultery. Not to be fornicating. These things you have a time period to learn how to control and get it right before what time is up. But keep going. Let's go back to Titus. Yes, sir. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh -huh. For the grace of God that bring of salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, uh -huh. looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, right. who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. He can redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Read. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, that word peculiar, that's that, that word ain't a typical word. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when I look at the way the Most High calls Israel, some of the words outside of 
peculiar people is one. A uh, holy is another. What's the more? What you say? Elect. Elect. It's kind of chosen. chosen, right? These words, right? It's kind of like your name may be John John, correct? Right. Your name is John John. I mean, your name is John, right. but your mama nicknamed you John John. Right. So when she go outside, you may be out. You remember you you outside playing, and soon the lights come on. You know that them street lights you better be in before a certain time, right? Right. And your mama may come out that door. John John, bring your behind in this house, boy. Nobody looking but you. That's your name. Right. That's the name that your mother gave you. That's the nickname. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody looking at you like, boy, you better get your behind home. Right. But you get your butt whooped and you run on down. That name is particular mm -hmm. for Israel. Let's prove it. Exodus 19 and 5. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 19 and verse 5. Read. Now, therefore, if thou wilt obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. For all the earth is the Lord and peculiar people. Keep going. some more than that. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Unto the children of Israel. They are the peculiar people. So I haven't read anything about the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Edomites. Everything so far has been uh, uh, containing to the Israelites. Go ahead, Doc. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 2. Uh -huh, read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. <laughs> but there I go again. I have chosen you to be a peculiar people above all people on the planet earth. This guy sounds like a racist. That's right. All praise it to the most high. We on the right side. Thank you, Lord. Mm. But the truth is the truth. That's right. This ain't no private interpretation as we stated before. We've been going precept upon precept proven. Mm -hmm. Remember, the scripture says not to add on or take away. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into it. Get into it some more. Let's get the first video uh, about the pastor talk. No, that's not him. Let's go to the next. The other one. Uh, with the one talking about grace. Is that the two? Uh-uh, not that one either. It's another one. Let me see. Oh, no, go back. Maybe that was it. That one you just left. It was short. I think it was like four minutes. Is that it? That one? Okay. It's first one. Oh, yeah, that's that guy. That's that guy. Okay. They got them suits, them Easter suits on. No, they hot. He look hot. His, look at his forehead. His forehead is sweating. Look at it. Lord here. But let's let's play this, man. Let's play this. Let's see what this guy's talking about. What's this pastor's name? They got his name. No, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even, don't even matter. But let's see what this guy's talking about. Go ahead. Pastor Chris gave. Uh, what's grace? Grace is the divine influence on the heart of a man that is reflected or expressed outwardly. I'll take that again. Grace is the divine influence. That means a divine impartation in the heart of a man. That is the spirit of a man. That means grace is a spiritual commodity. It's a spiritual essence that is imparted by the Holy Spirit in the spirit of a man. In the spirit of a man. Your spirit can receive grace. Grace is the divine influence on the heart of a man and it is reflected or expressed outwardly. That means your spirit is imparted, but that impact now is manifested. Manifested outwardly in what you do and how you do it. In what you do and how you do it. It is the outworking of a divine inward influence in your heart through God's word. Grace is the outworking, the outshowing of the impartation 
of a divine influence in your heart through God's word. When you receive God's word and ingest it into your spirit, what it becomes is grace. Oh, who, who got that? Give you an example. Your body doesn't know rice. Hmm? Pastor Gosling, your body, your internal organs, they don't know what rice is. They don't know what bread is. They can't differentiate between rice and bread. It is only your brain, your test, your mind that can say this is bread, this is cake. No, because with your organs. What is this brother talking about, man? <laughs> No. This brother had not went in the scriptures now one time and showed us what grace is. Hell this brother no. talking about bread and rice and cake. This brother hungry, man. This brother needs some food. Boy, ain't no way, boy. But what's going on with this guy? Lord have mercy. Come on, we can finish it. Let's try to finish this thing. Lord. But as you notice, did he go into the scriptures at any point in time? No, he talking about bread and rice and that don't even mix. But go ahead. Let's go ahead. They can relate with carbohydrates. Because your, your, whatever you eat would end up either as carbohydrate, protein, fat. Those are the things that your organs can take. So if it is bread or rice, it will end up as something else. When God's word comes into your spirit, the final product of assimilation, the way your spirit assimilates God's word is called grace. Let's, let's stop. We got enough. As we can see, this guy right here don't know what he's talking about. And apparently he's hungry because all that we're talking about is bread, rice, carbohydrates, but he ain't heard nothing about grace. Nothing about he never did go into the scripture and gave you what grace is. Hold up. Hey, wait a minute. Thank the Lord. You the, right. And you you hear him. You hear. Because you could have been look, hey, look at the guy in the blue back there with the phone. You see him? The dude with the blue. He ain't paying no attention. Everybody, look back there. They got the phone. They ain't paying no attention. Like this nigga. It's called nigga. <laughs> yeah, look, that's luck. They ain't paying no attention. Yeah, we know this nigga don't know what he's talking about. His pants too tight. The circulation not going all the way to his head. But let's get out of there, man. This man has no idea what grace is. And I'm going to show you why he don't understand. Go to Isaiah 28. It's plain as day. Because he has the same Bible that we have. For the most part. Now, I say that. But I hope he do. They may have an NIV or some crazy stuff like that. But for the most part, he got the King James Version. But yeah, we're going to read, start at verse uh, 28, verse 9. Here's the problem right here, y'all. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Stay yourselves and wonder. 28, Isaiah 28 and 9. Oh, 28, right. Uh -huh. uh, Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Hey, man, this brother apparently haven't been on no milk. Mm. This brother ain't been on no milk. Hell no. But keep going. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Keep going. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So you're going to read a little bit in the Old Testament. You're going to read a little bit in the New Testament. Right. You may read a little bit in the Apocrypha. Remember, the scripture says rightly dividing the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if there's a right way to divide the word of God, guess what? There's a wrong way also. Mm -hmm. But keep going, I. To whom, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith Ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Uh -huh. But the word of the Lord was upon them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. So the same precept is upon them. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. They, you know, remember what I stated. If there's a right way to divide the word of God, there must be a wrong way because mm -hmm. precept upon precept is upon them also. Mm -hmm. But watch what he says. Go ahead. That they might go and fall backwards. That they may go and fall backwards. Apparently, this dude don't fail backwards a bunch of times. A bunch of times he don't fail backwards. Mm -hmm. That's the word of God. Wrongly dividing the word of God. Not understanding the power of the word of God. He thinks that his words is more powerful than the Bible. Mm. That's why he's over there talking about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates and protein. And like, bro, what's your a, a, a fitness health? Or what are you talking about? Damn. Come on, man. But then here's the issue. But, but go and get out of there. Let's go to the next, brother. Matter of fact, uh, get it out. Let's go to the next video. And we just want, did y'all see the time? Y'all got it. It looks like y'all have it on the time span that we want. All right. So let's get it. Let's see what this guy talking about. Now, nah, I'll tell you what. The spirit. Let's not go to him yet. Go to the other one. <laughs> but these guys right here don't have the slightest idea. That boy got that, uh, what sweater he got on, man? What's that guy named? Mr. Rogers sweater. <laughs> Mr. Rogers in your neighborhood. But go ahead, go play this. Watch this, y'all. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now comes the bombshell. Read Look at Esau. <laughs> Look at Esau. He pointed his finger up. The devil is always in the mix. Go ahead. Read. For Christ is the end of the... Wait a minute. Since I'm in Christ, why keep trying to put me under the law? Keep trying to put me under Sabbath days and put me under meat that I can eat and can't eat. Put me under what I can wear and can't wear. Why keep trying to put me under the law when Christ is the end of the law for righteousness? You see this crap? Let's see what Christ says out of his own mouth. Let's, let's deal with this real quick. This guy, so what he's saying is you don't mind if a brother rape your, your wife. You okay because he's under grace, right? You don't care if a man comes to sleep with your dog in the back. Bestiality. You okay with that because he's under grace, right? You cool with that. You don't care if they come in and rob your church and take out the tithes and offering, right? You, you okay? You should be okay with that. They under grace. Let them get the money and go right out the door. They on the grace. We don't have to keep no laws. This the type of talk that is destroying the black community. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. You have a church in every, at each corner in the black community. Mm -hmm. I always say you're going to hit a church. You close your eyes with a rock, you're going to hit a church and a liquor store on each corner. These churches are set up in our community, and this is what they teach him. Damn! That you don't have to keep the commandments of God, that you want the grace. Mm -hmm. So you should be okay with police brutality. Hmm. You should be okay with the black on black crime and the murders in the neighborhood. If you saying this, it doesn't make any sense. But let's see. Hold it out. Watch this. Let me show you that this guy is a liar and the truth is not in him. Go to Second Edgerus. Second Edgerus. And let's go to nine. And let me make sure that's what I want. Nine and 36. Yeah, that's it. Watch this. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, and verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. Remaineth in his force. The laws of God is still stands today. The laws of God is still in force. Mm. But the brother has no understanding of that. That's right. 
Because he apparently he's not reading the scriptures. But let's see what our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew. Let's get Matthew 15. So apparently the scripture says the law is still in its force, meaning it's still in existence. Yeah, 515, I'm sorry. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So Christ says out of his own mouth, think not that I am come to destroy the law. I mean, come to destroy the law. That's easy to understand. He ain't come to do away with it. A kid should understand that. We'll understand that. But go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. What did Christ fulfill? Hold that. Go over to uh, Luke 24. 24, 44. Then we're going to go over to uh, Acts 3. What did, what is Christ saying? I didn't, he not did come to destroy, but to fulfill. What is he talking about? This is the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44. Read. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning him. Go over to Acts. What's concerning him? The prophecy that he must die for the children of Israel. That he must be hung on the cross. He must be pierced. He must be whipped. But go ahead, watch that. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, and verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. The suffering that Christ, he fulfilled that. On Calvary, mm -hmm. they hung him, they pierced him. Now go over, go back over to Matthew. Let's get to it, because this guy don't know what he's talking about. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. and think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Uh -huh. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. We are still here. We are sitting on heaven and earth. We, we can look in the sky and we see heaven. We standing on the ground. We see earth, right? Go ahead. Till heaven and earth pass. See you here today. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Not one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law. And we in the New Testament. This is Jesus Christ. So you're going to believe Jesus Christ or the pork, pork chop eating pastor? Which one? Which one? Go ahead. To all be fulfilled. And all things are not fulfilled. The nation hath not went in captivity. That's right. So we must keep the laws of God. Go over to uh, Romans 6 and 1. This, this is the problem with the black, I mean, this all these pastors, man, that they say things like this. And they don't understand what they're saying. Like I say, you saying it's okay, you know what I'm saying, for man, sleep with your wife. Facts. And you, I guess you're going to sit there and watch. No telling, though. These dudes are sick. Right. <laughs> watch this. Go ahead. This Let, is hold on. Before you get there, give me Psalms 119 and verse 160. We'll get that. We'll get that. We're going to come back to it. Psalms 119 and verse 160. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 160. Uh -huh. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. They endure forever. His words is true. Not to covet another man's wife. Facts. Not to covet another man's, uh, another woman's husband. That's true. Facts. Today. Not to bear hatred, not to mummer, mm. not to steal, not to kill. Nice. That is still true today. And but it's been set up from the beginning. So why would God destroy that? If if, if God destroyed it, it would be chaos. It would be chaos in the planet Earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Go to Psalms 119 and 172. 
Psalms chapter 119 and verse 172. Uh -huh. My tongue shall speak of thy words, for all thy commandments are righteousness. All thy commandments are righteousness. Right? So watch this. Go over to Romans 6 and 1. This is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Should we continue in sin just because you are under grace? Go ahead. God forbid. No. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It doesn't make any sense, y'all. Christ came and died for our sins, so we must, we're going to continue in it? Okay, bring it out. Does that make any sense? No, sir. I, I, I didn't even pull this because we get Revelations real quick. Revelations 22. Revelations 22 and 14. We're in the last chapter in the book. The last, uh, matter of fact, the, the way you're going to get into the kingdom is by keeping God's commandments. That's right. Go this ahead. is the book of Revelations, chapter 22 and verse 14. Uh-huh, read. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So you want to be blessed, you have to do God's commandments. Keep going. That they may have right to the tree of life. That they may have right to the tree of life. Get into the kingdom of God. Read. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Read. For without our dogs, without our dogs, and sorcerers, uh -huh. and whoremongers, uh -huh. and murderers, uh -huh. and idolaters, uh -huh. and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And this is what this man apparently loved, to make things a lie. But the Bible we just read in Revelation, we went to the last chapter, and it says, you want to get in the kingdom? Keep God's commandments. Let's see what Christ said. I want to point out something before we get to the grace. Watch this. Go over to John 8 real quick. I want to show something. If, if all we got, all we have to do is keep grace, and that's all we have, then what are we doing? Hey, we just could just be out here be some lawless people. But watch what Christ say, because that's 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 a lie. This is the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 3. Let me get over there with you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees. I'm sorry, 8 and 11. 8 and verse 11. Uh -huh, read. She said, no man, uh, Lord. Go up to, uh, go up to verse 6. Verse 6. This, they said, tempted him. Uh, tell you what, go up. Verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So oh, they caught this woman getting it in. What? Where the, where the man at? <laughs> You know, say so this woman in the very act, right? Do was very partial, these uh, Pharisees, scribes. But go ahead now, Moses. In the law, command of us that we that such should be stoned. But what says thou? Oh, they were trying to tempt Christ. Go ahead. This they said, tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, uh -huh. wrote on the ground, and as though. He heard them not. Uh, read. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Uh -huh. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. They say because they conscience. They was, I mean, I can't. Because Christ said, let whoever don't have sin, throw mm -hmm. the first stone. Facts. So they each, they left. Mm -hmm. But continue on. And Jesus was left alone. Right. And the woman standing in the midst. Mm -hmm. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. What did Christ tell the woman? Go and sin no more. Christ told this woman, go and sin no more. Why did not Christ say that? Continue on, woman. You are saved by grace. 
Go have as much fun as you like. But Christ says, go and sin no more. Come on, man. And we in the, come on, my boozy boys. Come on, man. And we are in the New Testament, and it's talk about go and sin no more. But the pastors say we are not under the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. To get that, because they may not know. What is sin? Maybe he don't know. Let's get that. That's not in it. First John 3 and 4. Christ says, go and sin no more. And you know why he said that? Because, listen, I ain't come to condemn right now. You got grace. Get it right. Mm -hmm. Get it right, sister. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whosoever commit of sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Right? And this is what we got to realize. Why did not Christ, you know what I'm saying, persecute the woman? Why did he not kill? There wasn't a time yet. That's the grace. Sis, I don't, I'm not here for that. Get yourself right. That's the grace period. Because understand this. Grace has an expiration date. Go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. 4 and 7. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh -huh. But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Right. And to the every last one of you, the gifts is different. Right. Have you ever noticed... I ain't gonna say you ever noticed, but certain individuals that go do a certain maybe a sin and they get exposed or something bad happened right then and there. Right. And then another individual, it just continue on. You know what I'm saying? The grace, the measure of grace is different for each and last one of us. Right. You can't go do what another brother do because your you may your grace may not be as long as his. Mm. You ain't King David. Mm -hmm. You not, I mean, uh yeah, you're not King David and you're not Solomon. You go do one sin in the most high, <laughs> require your soul. Kill that nigga. Kill that nigga. He got to go. Mm -hmm. Your grace, every one of our grace has to measure. So you can't look at John and, and, and in the body and be like, man, John does this. John smoke. You And you go smoke that damn, you go smoke weed and yours lace. Mm. Hell no. Nah. You go smoke one time, then your weed is lace. Then you in here, man, bugged out. Bugged out. Right. Never could bounce back. It's people like that. Yep. People that actually took drugs one time and was never able to bounce back. Everybody has a measure of grace. All right? Jump over to uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh -huh. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't take the grace, that time period that you're supposed to be getting yourself right in vain. Thinking you have time and using that to do all types of wickedness because you don't know the measures of your grace. Message. Your grace. <laughs> hey, listen, your grace is important. But in that time, as we stated in Titus 2 and 11, you should be getting yourself together, not playing with your sins, right? Get Sirach 15 and 4. Now, now hold that. Get Jude 4. Jude 4. Don't take that grace in vain. Make sure you are applying, studying the scriptures, understanding that your grace Go ahead. This is the book of Jude 4. For there are certain men crept in on the wells who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace into sexual desire. I'm going to I'm gonna use this grace to get as, I'm not ready yet. I'm going to try to sleep with as many women as I possibly can. That's I'm right. going to try to sleep with as many win, uh, men as I possibly can before. What do you get? We yeah. here <laughs> before, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to settle down. Right. Whatever it may be. Brothers do that. So I'm not ready. I'm, 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 I got to get, 
I got to go and see what's out here. It's nothing out there. Right. Nothing out there but goddamn diseases. Mm. Right? Nothing but diseases. Go over to Luke. I'm going to skip around because I got a lot. Then I'm going to come back up with this next video. Go to Luke uh, 13. Let me get over there with you. We want to read verse 24. We're going to read 24 and 25. Let me get that with you. Watch this, y'all. Let me give you a, this is how grace is going to respond. But go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 24. Uh -huh, read. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, with, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh -huh. He say, listen, uh, enter into the straight gate. That's keeping the commandments. Don't go to the left or don't go to the right. Right? Read. When once the master of the house is risen up and have shut to the door, and they begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto, the, unto you, I know you not when she are. And that's what a grace is fire. I don't know you. The door is shut. Can you imagine coming to Christ and Christ shutting the door on you? Say, hey, man, get out of my face. I don't know you. Hell no. That's heavy. He said, I never. Get away from me. Get that out. What we said? I never knew you. Yes, sir. Just as the bag up, man. That's a heavy scripture. He says, seek into the straight gate. The straight gate is the commandments of God. Don't go to the left or go to the right. And, that, and that's, boy, that's heavy. That is heavy. I like that. And if you can't, I'll tell you what, I'll go over to Sirach 15 and 20. You'll get it. And, uh, which one? Uh, Sirach 15 and 20. I'll tell you what, hold that. Let's get into this next video. We're going to get into it. Let's get into this next video. Let's see this, what this guy talking about. Oh, Lord, I'm going to try to stomach this. But go ahead. You can play it. Then we're going to come back to the scripture. It. You are not under the law. Oh, Lord. He wrote that. If you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Look at that. Genesis, uh, excuse me, Galatians 5 and 18. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. It, God's trying to convince us through this message of grace, we are not led by the law. And people want to be led by the law. And, and, and God, God said, no, that's not good. I'm delivering you. You're no longer under that system where you're being led by the law. But if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the law, you are not under the Spirit. Paul made it clear that Christians are under grace and not subject to the Mosaic law. He made that very clear. How did he make it clear? Well, number one, he says Christians are under grace and not the law. Romans 6, 14. What did he say? He said for, go there. I'm, I'm going to call these scriptures out. I, I, I'm tempted to just go through them, but you need, to, you need to hear this. If I don't finish it all, we'll pick it up next week. Uh, Romans uh, 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law where sin has dominion, but you're under grace. You're not under the law and the process by which you're trying to achieve morality. You're under grace and the administration of the Holy Spirit to achieve morality. Look at Galatians 4, 4 through 5. This is the whole purpose for Jesus' is coming. Galatians 4, 4 through 5. He says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Watch this. Why? To redeem them that were under the law. So notice he came to deliver them that were under the law or the process of rule keeping to try to achieve moral law to deliver you. Why? Why did he want to deliver you from that process under the law? That we might receive what? The adoptions of sons. Look at Philippians chapter 3 and 9. Philippians 3 and 9. Christians are not, are under grace and not under that process of the law. Philippians 3 and 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. So my righteousness is not of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I am righteous because Jesus is righteous, 
and I believe it, and I say, Lord, I believe you, and as soon as I do that, I'm made righteous without any rule-keeping or anything. It's my trust and faith in him. Look at Romans chapter 8 and 3. Romans chapter 8 and 3. God wants to deliver you from condemnation. He wants to deliver you from... All right, so let's dive in it, man. These pastors are something else. It's, it's ironic. I think he went into... He went a whole bunch of places, but I remember that he has said something about um, by Galatians 5, right? He went to Galatians 5, and what was that he said? He just said, by led in the Spirit. 5 and 18. Yes, that's it. 5 and 18. Let's get it real quick. Let's dissect this guy. This is the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 18. Uh -huh, read. But if ye be led of the Spirit, Ye, not, ye are not under the law. What law is it talking about? The law of sacrifice. That's right. It's ironic he jumped right here. But let's jump up and get a understanding of what's going on in this chapter. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 1. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. The liberty is the grace that Christ have given you. Not animal sacrifice anymore. But continue on. Wherewith Christ had made us free uh -huh. and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage was everything that was containing to the animal sacrifice. That's right. Watch this. Go over to Acts 15 and 10. We, we going to, don't worry, Pastor, we going to get down to the bottom of it. <laughs> Go ahead. This is the book of Acts chapter 15. 15 and verse 10. Uh, start at verse 1. Verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the matter of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Going into, you can't, if you ain't doing animal sacrifice, mm. ain't no salvation for you. Jump up to verse uh, 5. Verse 5. Uh-huh. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Uh -huh. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider for to consider of this matter. Go down to verse. So as we look, it was the scribes and the Pharisees that came in. Hey Amen. Y'all need to be circumcised. Talking about animal sacrifice. That's right. But watch this. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Oh, the yoke is going into animal sacrifice. Go over to Galatians. Go through this real quick. Galatians uh, 2 and 16. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 2 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. What is the works of the law? Go ahead. Animal sacrifice, right? But by the faith of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. even we have believed in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that we might be justified by the faith of, of, of Christ. And not by the works of the law. Uh -huh. Animal sacrifice. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of animal sacrifice, is, that's done away with. Mm -hmm. Hold it. Jump over to uh, Hebrews real quick, and we're going to come back to it. Jump over to Hebrews 9. Let's get some clarity on this. In verse 12. Uh -huh. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. What verse you on? Verse 12. Uh, start at verse 9. Verse 9. Uh, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. As pertaining to the conscience. Right, because every time you did a sacrifice, 
there was a remembrance of sins. Man, I got to bring this sacrifice. You know, I, I thought something bad. Let me bring this turtle dove. Right. Let me bring this trespass offering. There was always a remembrance. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washing and carnal ordinances. Because there was an order on how things was to be done. Go ahead. Imposed on them until the time of reformation. Hold that. The times of reformation. What is that? Give me Galatians 3 and 19. And we're going to come back to this. What is that? Who is that? This is the book of Galatians, chapter 3 and verse 19. Wherefore, then serveth the law, it was added uh, because of transgression. Right. The animal sacrifice was added because of transgression. Uh huh. Till the seed should come to whom? The promise. To the seed shall come. That seed is Jesus Christ. This is going to stay in existence until Christ come on the scene. Jump back over. Said Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9 in verse 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washing and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to, to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So now, that's no more animal sacrifice. Everything dealing with that, the, temp, uh, the temple was going to be destroyed in 70 A.D. The, the, uh, the blood, the uh, what's it up? Breastplate, no. the metric. Yes, sir. All of that is done away with. But watch this. Go back over to Galatians. Galatians chapter two. You want it verse seventeen now or sixteen? Mm, which one you on? We stopped at sixteen. Okay, the end of sixteen. Yeah, go ahead. You go ahead. Galatians chapter two and verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Uh huh. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, right. even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Uh -huh. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What verse you on? Ver uh, that's the end of 16. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. So... It says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves ought to be found sinners. Believe it, oh man, you know what? We got grace. We got grace because of Christ. We can go out and do all this wickedness because we ain't got to go do animal sacrifice now. That's right. No, that's not. No, that is wrong. Continue on. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Uh -huh. It's therefore. Christ, the minister of sin. Did Christ come for you to continue in sin? Like the pastor said, to continue the laws? To continue to do the laws? Did Christ come for you to have grace and continue in the sin that he saved you from? Read. God forbid. Yeah, God yeah, forbid. Nah. Keep going. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Uh-huh. For I... Through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Uh -huh. Jump down to uh, verse 21. Verse 24, 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not do what? I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God that was given unto me. To go back and to go back to the, the vomit that I was in before. That's right. That's what the pastor is trying to get us for you. You missing the whole point. The whole point of Christ dying on the cross. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, Pastor. But go back over to Galatians. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 18. Uh-huh. But Let's go to uh verse 1. Ver because Galatians. he skipped verse 1. Yes, sir. Yes, Matter sir. of fact, hold it. Yes, Go sir. over to Galatians 4, because he talked about something in Galatians 4. Yes, sir. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4 
in verse 4. Let's clear it up. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Brothers, what is this talking about? What is this talking about? It says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Huh? The part it says, woman made under the law. Son made of a woman made under the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah somewhat right, yeah. A little more. Nah. Mm, let's get it. You know what I'm looking for? Luke 2. Uh, Yeah, that's you're gonna go to that one, but give me the give me the law. Let's go to the law. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 12. This is what it's talking about. Watch this. Uh-huh. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 12, and verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of separation. For her infirmity shall she be unclean. Uh -huh. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the in the blood of her purifying. So the point is in verse 3. It says, and he shall be circumcised on the eighth day. That's the law that is referring to. Even with that being said, you have to bring what? You have to be in a sacrifice for that. But when you go back, go back over. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, when you read in verse 6. Mm, yeah, you can. You can. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 12 and verse 6. Uh-huh. And when the days of her purif pur purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb. She shall bring a what? She shall bring a lamb. She shall bring a lamb. So even when you had your child, you circumcised them on the eighth day. So when you go back over to Galatians, that's what it's referring to. Watch this. Go back. This is the book of Galatians, chapter Four and verse four. Uh -huh. But when the fullness of the time was come, uh -huh. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Made under the law. Going into the law of circumcision. <laughs> Got it? I'll praise it. Yeah, go ahead and get Luke 2. This is the book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before uh, he was c conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses. According to the law of Moses, going into, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, circumcision, we just went over it. Watch this, go over to Hebrews 10. I, these pastors, they something else. But you see the tricks that they try to tell the people. You don't read your Bible, you're not following along. He's not even going into his Bible. He's skipping over certain things. Matter of fact, Galatians 6 and 1. Matter of fact, he went over there. He went over, he went to Romans 6 and 14, right? He went right over to Romans 6 and 14. Watch this. Let's go to Romans 6, 14, because I want to make sure that we leave nothing on turn. So let's read Romans 6 and 14. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 14. Uh-huh. For sin shall not have dominion over you, uh -huh. for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Uh -huh. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. God forbid. I don't even think he read that part. He just read verse 14. Yes, sir. It says, God forbid. What shall we say then? Because we are under the, we not under the law, animal sacrifice, right? But under grace, God forbid. Show up the six and one. 
Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How are you going to go back to the old man and the old woman? Right. You're supposed to be in Christ now. That's what you're supposed you're supposed to be in Christ. So how are you going to go back to that? Give me that in uh, Acts 13. Wait, these pastors are something else. Hold on real quick. Ephesians 2 and 1. That's what I want. Ephesians 2 and 1. This is the book of Ephesians. Uh, one more page. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Read. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses, trespasses and sins. Ye have he quickened. Quickened me bring to life. You was dead in trespasses and sins. That's right. Give me Proverbs 21 and 16. We're going to speed it up now. We was dead in trespass and sins. Now, guess what? We thanks the Lord for Christ. Sir, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 16. Uh -huh. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Why shall we go back to the congregation of the dead when Christ have uh, uh, brought us from them dead works? Right. From trespasses and sins. Why would we do that? I want to show something. It, it, it's, I'm going to show you what grace. I'm going to show you something about grace. Watch this. Go over to Proverbs. Now, hold that. We're going to get it. I'm going to say that because it's going to be a banger. Titus 3 and 8. Titus 3 and 8. Titus 3 and 8, and you can go on and get while we at it, get 2 Peter 2 and 20. And we'll read 2 Peter 2 and 20 first. Uh huh. I know I got you moving. Watch this, y'all. We got to understand grace is very important, but you got to use, use it wisely. Go this ahead. Is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 20. Uh huh. For it, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Right. So you want to go back into that old man? It's going to be worse on you. You, gotta, you don't want to go back. He's saying you go back, it's going to be terrible. Go ahead, read Titus. Titus. Chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh -huh. This is a faithful saying, and these things I, I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. And you must maintain good works. Always working. That's that grace. You know what? You know, I was in the world. I got to seek God 10 times more, as the scripture stated. In Baruch. Seek them 10 times more. That grace is now that you have the opportunity to get in the kingdom. Make your time. Make it make, make it count. Go over to Proverbs 1 and 8. Watch this. And this, this. I never thought about this, but I was looking at it. This is through me for a loop. But watch this. Let's go into grace. Uh, Verse 8, we're going to read 8 to 10. Yes, sir. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Uh -huh. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy, thy head, and chains about thy neck. For it says, don't forget the law of thy mother. Going into the commandments. For they shall be an ornament of grace, right? Watch this. Keep going. My son, if sinners entice thee. My son, if sinners entice thee. Consent thou not. What would teach you that? Grace. Grace would teach you that. If sinners entice thee, don't go with them. Don't forget the laws of the mother. We're just going into the laws, going into wisdom. 
because in due time, I shall teach you, my son, to go consent with sinners. Wear grace on the ornament of thy neck. Never, I saw this scripture, read that scripture many times, and it's just boom. Like, wow, that's heavy. That, that's tough. But grace will teach you that. You understand? Because in grace, you should be learning righteousness. That's right. I shouldn't hang around these certain individuals. That's what grace should be used for. All right? So go over to Acts 13. And then we're going to jump down for time's sake. Acts 13, 38, 39. Because if the commandments of God is done away with, why did Christ come? Remember, why did Christ come? This is the reason Christ have to come. Go ahead. This is the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 38. Mm -hmm. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all things that, I mean, I'm sorry. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, you wasn't given grace for certain things you did. If you, if you was, matter of fact, let's show that. Let's get that in Leviticus 10. And we're going to read 10 through 14. Certain sins you did, there was no sacrifice you could bring to the hour. You can, you can offer a sacrifice. Uh, yes, sir. Leviticus 20, and we're going to read verse 10 through 14. We're going to show you this. Thank the Lord for Christ. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, and verse 10. Uh -huh. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, uh -huh. even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. You shall be put to death. You can't bring a sacrifice. I need your, I need your blood. Right. The Lord, I need your blood. I don't want no turtle dove. Mm. You got to die mm. if you was in this sin. Mm -hmm. But keep going. And the man that lieth with his father's wife. Uh oh, the man that lies with his father's wife. Read. Have uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Mm. Oh, you don't slept with your father's wife? Take that wife and that son, they must die. That's right. But under Christ, you are forgiven. You got a grace to get it right. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Their blood shall be upon them. Mm -hmm. And if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. They have wrought confusion. Their blood shall be upon them. They got brought confusion. The Lord, the Lord got, <laughs> he got a sense of humor. They gonna brought confusion. Now the dog don't understand. He's looking back like, she looking back. Oh, they, they confused like a mug. What's man. going on here? <laughs> we'll keep going. Out. Verse 13. Uh -huh. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, uh -huh. both of them have committed an abomination. Uh -huh. Wow. God called a homosexual act is abomination. Read. They shall surely be put to death. And they shall surely be put to death. A lot of us was in the midst of some of these sins. Right. All praise it for the grace of God to get it right. Mm -hmm. What verse you was on? The uh, Almost the end of 13. Go ahead. Their blood shall be upon them. Uh -huh. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burned with fire. Both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. Wow. You take a man, a wife, uh, you take a, and if a man take a wife and her mother, so his mother-in-law, the Lord say burn both of them. Straight up. Burn them in the street. That's a righteous judgment then. That's right. righteous. But guess what? I'll, the Lord say, guess what? They can repent. Salvation is still unto them. That's right. Under the blood of Christ. But that don't mean you go back and continue in this. So you telling me Christ died for you can go back and sleep with a dog, with an animal? Do that make any sense? No sense at all. Pastors, you got to be careful. Watch this. Go over to 2 Corinthians. Let's finish it out. We got three scriptures and we're going to close it. 
2 Corinthians 5 and 10. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Whether it be good or bad. We all must come to the judgment seat. And what are we being judged by? On what? On if we kept the laws, if we applied the commandments of God. So you telling me we don't have to keep the laws of God? It's foolishness. Go over to Acts 17 and 30. It doesn't make any sense, Pastor. This is the book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 30. Uh -huh. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at it. In this time of this week, read that again. I want to make this sure this sink in all our heads. And the times of his ignorance. In his time in the ignorance. God winked at. God winked at it. What do that mean? Jew. That, there you go. In this time of his wickedness, God winked. He winked and said, you know what? Bro, you see, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get it right. Get yourself together. I'm right. not going to kill you right now. I'm not going to kill you. He winked at it. This nigga can't get right. This Negro can't get right. Right. Or she can't get right. God winked at it. That's the grace. Go over to Ezekiel 18 and 30. Go, go, go. Finish out. I'm sorry. But no. Command of all men everywhere to repent. Commanded that everybody repent. Whatever wickedness we in, repent. He winked at it. That was the grace. You know your mama gave you that eye? Don't do it again. And they look out. They may do it. God said he winked at our ignorance. So we have grace. We have time to get it right. Ezekiel 18 and 30. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Uh-huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, save the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Repent, turn from your transgression. That's what we have to repent. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Well, iniquity don't be your ruin. Give me Luke 13 and 3. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 3. Uh -huh. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. If we don't repent, we shall all likewise perish. Take advantage of the grace that the Lord gave us. Don't use your time unwisely. Put forth the work. Use that grace. Study, apply, study, apply. Get busy within the truth, within the body. That way you don't go off. Right. Counsel. Don't be afraid to ask, hey, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with this. Don't be afraid. Right. The scriptures say there is safety in the multitude of counsel. All right. So all praises to the most high. You know, that will be the class for the day. You know, saying all praise. I hope that y'all got something from the class, man. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.